Hey everybody. Doing a little more painting today in my rather makeshift home. Um, yes, I do have it vented out. Uh, paint booth. Yeah, it's kind of a cluster, but it works. Um, so I've already done, this is for the wife's tour pack for her uh, street glide. It was given to me, it was uh, off of a bike that had an accident and there were a couple of scratches in the paint so they had replaced it so I got it for like nothing. Um, so I've already done the base coat and the color coat and wet sanded it down at 2000 grit to get any orange peeling off and now today is time for clear coat so I'm all set up I'm sweating I'm gonna have to change shirts and stuff before I do this um, I need to clean my parts now that I've got everything set up um, and then we'll start shooting clear coat and see what happens um, so we'll be back I'm not gonna have the camera in here while I'm painting because you know I don't need paint all over everything so we'll uh, we'll be back with it but um, so well actually while well, we're doing that so this time, when I painted the zombie bike, I used a uh, siphon, an old siphon gun that I had. And since then, I've actually gone and uh, got myself a uh, HPLV gun. So this is the gun that I'm using. It's a cheap ass, you know, no frizz. And now the lid's on the ground, so I gotta be cleaned out anyway before I use it. So it's just a cheap, you know, but it does have a regulator on it so I can regulate the pressure on it. Um, this is what I use to do the color coat and the candy, um, which I bought from Color Right. Actually, um, here's the, the clear coat. So the clear coat, clear coat is mixed in a one to four ratio. The base and the color are mixed in a one to one. So. I'm hoping that one quart of clear coat is going to do it for me. So we'll get at it and we'll get back to you. Okay, so back. And the paint booth is torn down. <laughs> all that nice orange dust from doing all this. So here we are with the clear coat on it. Now this has not been, this is dry pretty much but it has not been sanded or buffed or anything. So I am going to actually do a little sanding on the clear coat before I buff it. There are a few spots of imperfections and stuff um, that I want to address. But all in all, I think it turned out pretty well considering the fact that I've never done a three staging paint job like this where it's running a base a base coat and it's fairly close match to the wife's bike. Okay. But why am I why am I doing all this for her? Well it's kind of a selfish thing as well not just for her. Um, part of this is for me. Um, if you notice I'm kind of short one bike in the garage right now. That's because the road glide and I had a slight unscheduled dismount with an unmovable object. Um, so it is in the shop waiting for some painted parts. Really not bad. Um, just some, some scrapes when we went down. Um, all in all, it's okay. Uh, I'm probably more worse to wear than, than it is, but it just needs some painted parts replaced on it. So those are on order. So I've got a trip coming up in here in July to uh, New York from Florida and I'm going to take the wife's bike. Now, the wife is a midget. So she's got a reach seat on here. I will be putting my my seat on here. And because she's short, you can see her bars are quite a ways forward. So I gotta pull this front cap off and I'm gonna move her bars uh, to where I can use them. And when I say I can use them as far forward as they will go, stock bars, not high bars, but that's fine for this trip. Um, so I'm in the process of doing all of this just for her. Like I said before, this 
uh, for her bike, but this is this cost me nothing for the actual tour pack itself. Um, I just had to take it was gray, so I had to sand that down, get the clear coat and everything off of it, prep it, um, and then uh, paint it. So I had ordered the paint from Colorite. Yeah, there's the the scorched orange base. And actually the base is where all the metallic is. So all the metallic in this bike is in the base. The top coat, the color coat, the quote unquote color coat, is actually more of a candy right, than it is anything else. And then the clear coat obviously on top of all of that. So my next thing will be to wet sand it, uh, cut, buff, polish it all up, get it all reassembled, and get it back on the bike. So when I get into that, be uh, another day or so because I want to make sure that this clear coat is fully cured before I go start in the wet sand on it and mess it up. I did learn one thing. I actually ended up painting I ended up painting this base two times. I had to strip it and redo it all. I, I'm used to I use typically use denatured alcohol in between painting, you know, when cleaning parts when you're wet sanding and whatnot, get all the crap off of it. Um, and I had wet sanded, wet sanded the base. I hit it with uh, denatured alcohol, and first wipe, there goes all the paint. It just ate it off. It's like putting lacquer thinner on it. It just ate the paint. So I know now not to ever do that again. I guess you live and learn. Um, but we'll be back when I get this into uh, the wet sand phase, and then the touch up, or the uh, cut and the buffing phase of it so we'll be back and yes this is like fourth shirt today see you okay so we're back and I've skipped ahead you don't need to see me sitting here wet sanding shit so we last saw the clear coat and everything and uh, <clears throat> I've done a 2000 grit sand on the clear coat um, and this is what you're looking like right now you kind of we catch across the light a little bit. And see, she's pretty dull. But we're now doing 3,000. And I will say, I actually did I actually did the base. It's already been done with the 3,000. And what I uh, found is these um, 3,000 grit uh, sanding pads at AutoZone. And I just chopped them down into smaller handable pieces but it's nice because it a holds the water so when you're you know you're wet sanding it holds the water and keeps it wet and it keeps lubricating it instead of having to dip sandpaper and block and everything else and it's it'll keep it fairly flat because of that foam it's actually a pretty nice setup so let's get at the let's get at the 3000 grit because then the next phase is going to be uh, various cuts, polishes to buff that up to a nice gloss again so that it matches up the uh, wife's street glide. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show right now I'm using cutting compound in the pad and what this looks like at 3000 grit. I got a piece of tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work this area over here now we're going to come back, pull the tape, and we'll show why we're going through a cut and not just straight to a polish. So this part here of the, of the bag, since it's sitting underneath, I'm not spending a whole lot of time on. I just hit it really quick with them 3,000 just to knock it a little bit, but not a whole lot of work going on there. But let's take a look at what that cutting does, all right? Okay, so just a, did a quick, just one pass. And you can see already how that's changing, right? So if we pull this tape, you, see the, you can see the difference between the two sides. And that's just cutting compound. We haven't even hit the polish yet. So we'll be back with that part in a bit. Right? It's, uh, it's coming along. Right? And I think this will come out just fine. I've got a set of, you know, I have a color matched hinge. I got the hinges painted up, color match the, the bags. Like her street glide head, because it's got the instead of having the black 
or chrome. It's got the color matched. Right? So, all right, we will be back again. All right, so I'm not great at this video stuff, but I skipped way ahead um, in what I've been doing. So I didn't bother showing the various stage of cut polish. Well, I showed part of the cut, but I didn't go into the polish stage. But let's just jump into final, finally put together. So here's the tour pack with the matching latch on the wife's bike. So the seat, uh, since the seat came with it when I got it, um, like I said, it was free. Um, it came off of another bike that um, had a bit of a boo boo. So there was a cup. There was like a gouge down in here, which just took a little bit of body filler and you know spot putty really. So matched hinges. You know, seat does have some a little bit of damage to it, but for what it is, um, and I put a luggage rack on it. This one actually is an Edmund back Edmund Black. Uh, luggage rack so everything matches up because it's like I said it's got the matched on the saddlebags so then the latches match both sides painted latches so it matches up the only problem is is I may end up at some point having rekeying this so that it matches the rest of the ignition and everything so it doesn't have she doesn't have to carry around a second key um, but it's a detachable on a detachable setup so um, she can take it on and off whenever she needs to. She wants to, uh, like we're going to potentially take a trip up to North Carolina. Um, she, we can actually, you know, carry, she can carry all her luggage stuff with her. I'll carry all mine on my bike. And I will be taking her bike, uh, as I said, um, up to New York. So there we go. There's the final, how it turned out final. Um, you know, is it perfect? No. Um, again, you know, I, 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 I did this in my garage and, you know, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but, um, like right in here, there's a little bit of extra dark, dark spots where the metallic kind of pulled up a little bit. Um, but it's not bad, you know, for something I just painted in my garage at home myself. Um, I think it turned out pretty well. It matched the color matches in pretty darn good. Um, and again, that's the color right paint. And if you've got a Harley and you're going to do something like that, they've got every single year make or year model um, you can get the paint for it. So I appreciate everybody's uh, patience in getting this done. And until next time, ride safe, take chances. See ya.